It does. I've just been told that my beard smells like popcorn, and it kind of does. Um, Thanks for coming back. This is part two of the Rage Bringer. Today we're going to be heat treating the blade and maybe burning my shop down. And then we're going to do the finish grinding and kind of get the, the blade aspect of it squared away. Let's do it. We'll start by letting the forge get hot while we prep the blade for heat treat. You may have seen that wavy line on a katana. That's from differential hardening. That's done by taking clay, or in our case, some furnace cement, and applying it to the blade in the areas that we want to stay soft. That will hold the heat in when you dunk the blade in the oil. So those areas will cool slower and remain softer. After we get the blade heated up, we'll quench it in oil. You can technically use water, but there's a really high risk of cracking the blade and we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna use oil. In this case, canola oil, cause I'm cheap. You want the oil to be a little bit warm and the typical way you do that is by warming up a piece of rebar in the forge and then quenching that in the oil and stirring it around. I'm making a mistake here and I'm using a piece of plumbing pipe. There's a problem that occurs when you put a hot pipe into water, and that's that it can flash boil the water that's inside the pipe and shoot it out of the end, burning you. This is amplified by the fact that we're using oil. So here the oil starts heating up, vaporizing in the tube, and there's steam, oil steam, shooting out of the back of the pipe. You can't see it happen on camera, but that steam eventually ignites, and I'm holding a flamethrower. Luckily, there wasn't a bunch of garbage around, so when I threw it on the ground, it didn't burn my house down. And it successfully warmed the oil. Now we're going to heat the blade up to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's a difficult temperature to take, but thankfully there's a trick to getting that temperature. You can use the color, but also you can use the fact that steel becomes non-magnetic at 1425 degrees. So here, my magnet sticks to the blade, so I know it hasn't hit that temperature yet. Once we do hit that temperature, we wait a little longer, let it get just a little bit hotter, and then we pull it out and quench it in the oil. It's right here that I verify with a magnet that it does not stick anymore. And I check all the way down the length of the blade. We want the whole thing to be hard. And then we stick it back in the forge, working it back and forth to get a nice even heat. and Warm it up just a little bit more, so we take it that last 75 degrees until we're at the critical temperature. One more check, it doesn't stick, and we dunk it in the oil. Once the blade fully cools to room temperature, It'll be as hard as glass, but while it's still warm, there's a small window to straighten the blade. We did pick up a little bit of a warp when we quenched it, and if we're careful and we don't push it too far, you can pry the blade between two points and straighten it back out. Here, I'm using the jaws of the vise to get that leverage. We're looking pretty straight now, but it still could pick up another warp while it cools down to room temperature. So while it does that, we will clamp it between two plates of steel, and that will prevent the warp, and it'll actually conduct some of the heat away so that it cools off faster. Once the blade fully cools off, you can run an ordinary file down the edge of the blade and that'll tell you if it's hard. If it skates across, 
without digging in, it's hard. If it digs in and cuts off metal, then you know it's soft. Here our blade is very hard, but also very, very fragile. If we dropped it right now, it would actually shatter. So the next step is to temper it in your ordinary and hopefully very filthy oven. With the tempered blade in hand, I decided I wanted to revisit the design of the plunge lines. They were rounded before, but I want to feather them back into the Ricasso so that we get this nice wedge shape right in front of the handle. We'll take care of modifying those plunge lines at the same time that we remove all the forge scale from the hardening process. We've set our jig up the same exact way that we did before, and we've set our contact wheel up the same exact way that we did before. And that's because we're doing the same exact grind that we did before. The only difference now is we're going to swap to a 600 grit belt because we want to sneak up on that finish now. It can be difficult to tell if your blade is making the same exact contact pattern with the wheel that it was when you did the initial grind. And a good way to determine that is to look at the grind marks that it's leaving on the blade. So you do your initial setup, do one swipe across the wheel, and if you're contacting at just the edge, then you need to lower your wheel. If you're contacting at the center line, then you need to raise your wheel. We've got our bevels set. They're looking pretty respectable now. The next step is going to be grinding the flats of the Ricasso. That will remove some of the clay that's on the blade, as well as the forge scale and the lines that we scribed earlier. It also help clean up these plunge lines here and make them more consistent. We'll do that the same way that we did before, but instead of using the contact wheel, we'll swap to the flat platen. For this we're going to be using a structured abrasive, which is a special kind of sanding belt that has the abrasive impregnated all the way through the glue that keeps it held to the belt. Normal sanding belts just have the abrasive material on the surface. With this, as you wear off the abrasive, there's just more abrasive underneath, so these belts tend to last a little longer and you can be a little bit more aggressive with them. We still have some waviness here in our plunge lines, but we'll address that later when we're doing hand sanding. Well, it looks like we got the blade pretty much squared away. The next step, next week, um, which I'm already editing, is going to be preparing the cross guard and the pommel, the rough shaping of those, um, which we're actually using a milling machine to do. And it was maybe the second thing I've ever milled and it was challenging. So check it out, subscribe, come back next week. Bye. Bye.